What is going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm not in the flesh, but if you want to see me in the flesh, you can check me out at Your Motivation Guy. Yo, just want to encourage you, like always, man, to just, you know, look at every little thing as an opportunity to grow. Like, we're constantly growing. We're constantly getting better day to day, week to week. Like, whatever the circumstance, whatever is going on, no matter the trial, the tribulation, we are growing, man. We're becoming stronger. You know, resistance makes us stronger. When you work out, you have to have a lot of resistance in order to get stronger. And this is what this season is doing with us, you know? So let's keep going. You know, entering season two, Fortnite implemented one of the most game-changing factors and most likely the entire history of competitive Fortnite. Throughout the course of Fortnite's journey to the top, traps have been a significant aspect of gameplay. However, with the removal of damage traps, box fights have evolved and because of this, older sensitivities are no longer viable. So, in today's video, we're going to be showing you guys the best sensitivities for each player type and we're going to be giving an in-depth explanation for both linear and exponential. Once we've explained everything and, you know, taught you guys what you need to know, we're going to go over which aiming option is better when it comes to the famous exponential versus linear debate. Also, if you guys want to learn how to play exactly like the pro players, yo, you got to check out ProGuys.com like now, where we have the best coaches in the world. Sign up for our membership today and get exclusive access to master courses by players like Benji and Mongrel. If you want to go more in depth and explore all the different aspects of competitive gameplay that you need to know in order to succeed, head on over to ProGuys.com. All right, guys, it's about that time. Yo, I'm so excited. Everybody say this with me. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Come on, where's your candy at? Where, where's it at? Where's it at? Here you go. It's that bunchy crunch. And you know, we better get this going. So competitive Fortnite had very obviously taken a huge turn. Ever since the rise of Unknown Army, competitive events and tournaments have evolved. You know, when we look at the cash cups and point based events that are hosted by Fortnite, we instantly notice that the threshold for the maximum points has significantly rose when being compared to the previous seasons. This is because many pro and advanced level players have begun to just W key and just change their playstyles. It's also caused a sort of, you know, divergent evolution that's created newer, more effective, yet very diverse playstyles. And on controller, different sensitivities are required for every single one of these. So let's get into some of the most dominant playstyles and the sensitivity you're gonna need to be good at. First up, we have the well-known W key. All right, so back in the competitive history of older seasons, it could have been seen that W King was shunned and very looked down upon. This is because the end game was the main goal for many players, and getting eliminated in the mid game was seen as a very negative action known as griefing. So griefing has turned into a word that, you know, describes earlier mid game eliminations that violate rules and pro scrims. And this is because of the W key player type gaining respect and being used just so much more. So let's get into the best sensitivity and dead zones for this play style and why it is the best. You know, as competitive players started realizing that in order to consistently place well, they'd have to do something completely different. They turned to W King, pushing every opponent, dominating every fight, and continuing to make it to the end game no matter how much they attempted fights with other opponents. This sounds pretty incredible, right? You know, especially when, you know, one of the best players in the world at doing this is a controller player, AKA Unknown Army. So why is he so good at these close quarter W keys? Well, you know, a major portion of it comes down to his fast sensitivity. Unknown plays on a relatively fast sensitivity for a player who's very focused on accurate aiming above all else. Most players who play focused on hitting their shots tend to be on a very slow sensitivity, right? But Unknown has always been on a faster sensitivity and, you know, he's had a lot of practice with it as well. This allows for him to be able to turn rapidly in close quarter fights where he needs to be able to keep up with his opponent's movements, making his aim tracking significantly better. All right, so let's get into the sensitivity and why we believe it's a great one, right? Starting off with building and editing speed. These are both set to 2.2. Use advanced options on horizontal speed on 53%, vertical on 42%, horizontal and vertical boost set to 0%, turning boost ramp time 0, and instant boost when ramping on off, all right? As for your ADS sensitivity, set both your horizontal and vertical to 19%. And finally, make sure that your aim time is set to exponential. Also, keep look dampening time on zero and let's just move on to the dead zones all right for dead zones we suggest setting your move stick to 10 percent and your look stick to eight percent all right 
And there you have it right there. Looking at the sensitivity, you know, we noticed that it's not necessarily the fastest, but what makes it such a good sensitivity and somewhat fast is the fact that, you know, you can easily attract opponents and do major damage from close quarter fights as long as you can make a good effort to track opponents and really focus on your aim. The ADS is right where it needs to be for long range lasering. And the building and editing is perfectly last enough to, you know, do some major damage in those important build fights. All right, guys, so next up we have the passive player. Uh oh. This is the player that tends to drop in the edge of the map and tries not to enter into any serious fights until the end game has arrived. Although this player type doesn't get as many points as the W key player type, it is just much safer and can almost guarantee a solid end game, especially if that end game has a stacked lobby with lots of potential for eliminations. Now, the end game is a lot more mechanically intensive, right? Waiting to see if this player rotates out. There it is, a big shot, another elimination. And he's got, he's got near max materials. Kidding me. He's going to trap the ball. Oh, the ball escapes. The absolute seeds right now. Booga still moving through. And at this point, it's a sign of respect. We've got to watch this man. During the end game, you're going to be running around building, tunneling while also really playing for those eliminations. This makes it so that, you know, you'll have to be extremely fast while also being able to be accurate. <laughs> this could be a challenge for some, you know, especially if they don't have the settings for it. But many players may try, you know, bumping up their building and editing speeds. But this won't always lead to an improvement because, you know, you're going to such a huge change in pace. Instead, what we suggest doing is using these special linear settings. All right, guys, so start by setting your build mode sensitivity multiplier to 1.7 and your edit mode multiplier to 2.0. We do this because, you know, editing requires faster reactions and it's good just to make it as instant as possible, especially in the end game. Make sure, guys, that you use advanced options. You know, this is to set on, right? And then move into look sensitivity here. And I mean, like right here, set your horizontal sensitivity to 56% and your vertical to 52%. And make sure both of your horizontal boosts are set to zero and instant boost when building is off. Now move into the ADS settings section and set your horizontal and vertical ADS to 14%. All right, quick question. Did you guys notice how the ADS setting for this sensitivity are lower than the previous one? All right, so that's because on linear, okay, AR control is slightly harder than on exponential, right? This is because you don't get that gradual increase in your aiming. So instead, you have to make it up for it by lowering your ADS even more. All right, so finally, 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 make sure that your ADS boosts are all the way turned off and set to zero. All right, so next up, you're gonna want your look dampening time on zero and your input curve on linear. Of course, you know, keep your aim assist strength to 100%. And now for dead zones, here we go. Set your move stick dead zone to 10% and your look stick dead zone to 8% and you're ready to go. So the dead zones are set to these numbers because, you know, they're just great for accurate aiming, but give you just a bit of deactivation towards the very center so that, you know, the controller drift doesn't cause a really big change in your gameplay. All right, so we've gone over some of the best sensitivities for two of the most dominant play styles and really explain like, wow, you know, why they're so effective and important for controller players. All right, finally, this is what we're gonna do. Y'all ready? Let's move on to the debate between exponential and linear. I think it's about that time. And in just a moment here, all right, you guys are gonna know which sensitivity input is more dominant and why. Here we go. All right, so in this section of the video, we're gonna put an end to the heated debate between exponential and linear. Hundreds of thousands of controller players think that linear is better while hundreds of thousands also think that exponential is better. This argument sprung up like a wildfire upon the announcement of the removal of legacy aiming. Before legacy was removed, it was just clearly the most dominant controller aim input. But now that it is removed, controller players were given the hard challenge of choosing between the two. So to begin this, all right, we want to state something that, you know, we can just get this out of the way. Both of these are just incredibly good inputs for real. And, you know, they can both be very effective based on your play style. As you guys saw before in this section of the video, you know, the two play styles we covered for sensitivities involved both exponential and linear, not just one or the other. But in the end, you know, one does take home the gold and it's an overall better sensitivity to its perks. So we got to get into this comparison like right now. All right, so starting off with Exponential, we have a very strong aiming input that is mainly characterized by its similarity to Legacy. You know, its aim assist strength and the way that the input responds to movements are incredibly similar, right? Shorter radial movements in the right analog stick result in slower turning speeds, whereas longer, more extended movements result in faster turning speeds that reach the maximum that your sensitivity is set to. That's why the input has been named exponential because it's exponentially increases as you increase the distance of your analog stick from the center point where it rests. 
This may seem complicated at first, I get it, but believe us like when we tell you that this is actually a very, very good thing. Okay, so it gives you guys the ability to have fine aiming and control when needed from long distances while also giving you very good fast aim when needed. All you gotta do is just quickly flick your analog stick to the edge and you're gonna get a speedy turn rate. But one thing that Exponential does lack is the instant turn rate that linear input offers. What makes linear like really special is that, you know, it reaches the peak sensitivity speed almost as soon as you start to move the analog stick. And that's why many linear players have the tendency just to set their sensitivity much lower than exponential players. This gives you know linear controller players much better mechanical skills and editing because they can almost instantly turn and just trace their edits with almost zero delay. So far, this may seem like the main difference between these two is you know aiming versus building and editing, and that's just a really good way to put it. But it's really just not that simple, right? What makes things complicated is that you know you can have great building and editing skills in exponential so long as you get used to quickly flicking your analog stick close to the edge when you're building. This will kick in that's most instant max speed, making you a faster builder and editor. You know, you can also increase your building and editing sensitivities a slight bit to make up for the advantages that linear players may have seemed to have. So, you know, when looking at, you know, linear disadvantages towards aiming, however, you know, we do run into a dilemma here, right? You know, aiming on linear does have its perks because you're learning to aim faster, supposedly making you quicker at aiming. But linear has a tendency to make players become used to flick style aiming, which really is not good in Fortnite. So flicking is very important for creative build fights and for fights where building and editing are just really used a lot. But for arena, you know, where you're going to be jumping into people's boxes and mainly focusing on aiming, you're gonna run into a problem here. And that is the lack of control over fine aiming. We should, we had everything, we had everything good to win that fight as well, you know? You know, you simply just can't get the same aim that exponential players have when it comes to long, you know, distance AR lasering and, you know, close distance tracking when spraying with weapons like the SMG or even minigun, you know, AR or drum gun. And knowing that aiming is the most important aspect of Fortnite, right? You know, as we've mentioned many times in the past, you know, it just really starts to become clear which input is truly the best one. And if you haven't figured it out by now, the answer to this heated debate, ladies and gentlemen, is exponential. All right, so linear may first come off as a great way to build and edit because it feels better, right? But after spending months playing on it, you start to realize the limitation it has when it comes to your aiming and the lack of consistency that you're going to run into. So it just makes sticking to fast exponential settings the way to go, as exponential is going to get you exactly what you need in many different scenarios. All right, guys, once again, this is Your Motivation Guy. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to connect with me in the flesh at Your Motivation Guy. We'd love to hear from you guys. We got a lot going on. Make sure to like, subscribe. You know, if you enjoyed this video today, hey, share with your friends. We got a lot going on on Pro Guides Fortnite. We'll see you later.